Here we go. Let's drop him there. Oh. Look at this. Oh. Oh. Um, oh, my stupid face is obscuring it. I have to try and move up there. Is that, is he, I could miss out that bit. That's, that bit's fine. That's, yeah, that's most of it. That's fine. Anyway, I've not even made a noise yet. I'm, I'm, so this is <coughs> um, a software version of the very, very famous ARP 2600. It is, it is so stupid a synth. I've never managed to get my hands on one of the originals because they sell for stupid money. And now Behringer have bought out their, their BARP 2600 and they're going to knock one out for like, I think it's 500 quid. So you could literally get like, you could get like four or five or six of them for the price of one of the Korg versions. The original ones, I don't even, I couldn't even guess how much they go for. Um, they've been used by everybody. Um, oh, the VST was from uh, Cherry Audio. Uh, it's just down here. And you can get it on Plugin Boutique. And I got it for 15 quid. So is that like... $17, $18, something like that. It was ridiculously cheap. Um, this has been used by everybody, everywhere, all the time, f from when it came out to, like, till now in both software and hardware versions, because it's this lovely thing of being a three-oscillator um, monosynth that's semi-modular, which means, you crucially, you don't have to put any cables in to make a noise this one is uh well normal so things going at so if i just let me just make sure it's not too loud if i play a noise let's go from um let's go from new there's a thing here from new okay so that takes everything out oh is that it <clears throat> it's a bit disappointingly full for new um surely they just like some initial patch i don't remember this being Mm, wow, these are a bit... Right, well, I'll go from here anyway. So, first of all, take off the reverb. Don't need that. Um, so there's no... There is no... Uh, there are no leads in anywhere. So now there's nothing happening because this VCO is being virtually routed straight to this filter, which then goes to the envelopes, to the... Uh, amplifier which is shaped by the envelopes and everything but instead of having to put a ton of leads in that's just going along so if I just raise the input to the mixer here it's there no lead necessary now you notice it's the square wave that's going through and you think well that's a bit limited I can just have square wave from VCA1 that's a bit boring well no because you'll take your little patch cable virtually and go drag it along to there and now you've replaced it so oh look at that cable it, moved, it shimmied out the way see if it thinks you're going for something it's like i'll move out the way um so this is what i mean without the cable in uh, let's take it out this is normal to hear it's as if there's a cable going from there to there which, I mean, I can show you, because if I just do that, it should sound exactly the same, unless I'm mad. So, yeah, so that's that's as if that's always there. So you don't need that to hear it. If you start off this sound, you think, well, I want VCO1 doing a square wave. Well, you quids in, because it's there. Already, you don't have to do anything. If, you, if on the other hand, you want it to be doing a... Um, a triangle or a, a sawtooth or a sign let's have a sign say you want to do like a big subby bass thing and you want a big sign i mean listen to it i'm gonna switch up a little bit it's such a it's such i mean I, i'm i'm gonna to hope to show you but it's such a madly creative synth this is the um synth that ben burt had when he was doing uh, a lot of the original Star Wars sounds, this is the R2-D2 synth. I mean, listen to that, that's just... If I just take this and lengthen it...
I mean, it's pretty much instant, like... 808 bass. And I like the fact that just here, you have distortion, you can just switch on. Um, very easily. Now say if I think I like that, but I want it to go boom, like a, you know, real 808 would do. Well, how about if I take this um, envelope generator, which is controlling the, the amplitude of the signal at the minute, single signal, and I take that out and make it affect um, the pitch here. Well, actually look, it's already there. I don't need to. Um, all I need to do is switch this slider up because it's as if the cable's there. But what if I want a different envelope? Well, there's another one here. So why don't I use that instead? And then I can have a different pitch envelope to my amplitude envelope. So if I do this, bam, bam, bam. Replace that. So now that's overruling what was there before. Now that's because the sustain is on. So it's attack, sustain, release. It's not got the decay section of here. It's a simpler one. <clears throat> so if I take off the sustain, Fact, I don't want a kick to sustain this. So. Turn down the distortion a little bit. And look, it's not taking long at all to get this crazy down here kick sound but up here potentially 70s disco drum sound. Um, if I lengthen, <laughs> lengthen it a bit, because that's what we all want. <laughs> um, so, it's just, it's just really fun to play. Um, there, obviously, there is there there are other versions already. There's one in the Arturia collection, I think, and other people have done uh, two thousand six hundreds. But I basically bought this because it was it was really cheap. Like I thought, ah, how bad is it going to be? Fifteen quid, um, and it's really good fun. Uh, I'll show you some some patches I I made last night when I was going really a little bit too mad. Um, here's my droid patch. I'll bet switch this down. <laughs> I realise how annoying that is. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I love it. Um, that's Droid, then there's Droid 2. He's a little bit more uh, annoyed, I think. Uh, Droid 2's, she's had a bit of a fracture this morning. I live for sounds like this. And even though it sounds like the old um, proper cabinet version of uh, William's Defender, I, I'm down for that. <laughs> I have too much fun with this, I'm sorry. I just love making stupid sounds. I think I was born to do it. Then I made a kick. Um, in a very much more long version than the other, other thing. I use a filter 
to get this much cleaner sound. So legend has it, uh, and I think I asked him when I met him, that Daniel Miller, um, producer of all the early Depeche Mode stuff, and up to the mid-period really as well, um, used to use a whole 2600 just to get the kick sound for the early things. That kick sound that you hear on um, the very earliest uh, mute stuff. Um, I've not got quite a good a sound as him. but it's just a fun thing to program. Um, and of course, the good thing about plugins is that, you know, you buy one 2600 clone and you've got an, an ARP clone, but that's it. Here, I could have as many instances of this as my CPU can cope with. So I could have a whole kit just of ARP percussive noises. Um, and I'm, I'm tempted to, to be frank. Um, What else have I done? Um, Jotin noise wobble. Oh, this was another horrible sound. Let me turn it down a bit just in case it's real loud. I hear I was going for kind of like malfunctioning spaceship drive kind of a sound. I wanted something that sounded as if you're about to blow up. Yeah. As you can see, I mean, you can make really melodious sounds with this Well, I've made some really horrible... I'll, I'll, I mean, this isn't giving a good... Let me go through um, some of the, the beautiful preset lead sounds that'll be on you. Yeah. Um... Is that nice? So yeah, it can do it can do nice normal stuff as well. Frenchman. That's uncanny. I mean I have mean, never heard anything sound so much like a French but ever. <laughs> Why have they called this Frenchman? I really want to know. It's like, oh, Frenchman too? Did we need? The only thing it actually reminds me of is. Um, the theremin, I think it's a theremin, it might be in Ons Martin, but I think it's a theremin, at the start of um, uh, Jacques Brel's Namikita Pa. I mean, it could be good. It's not far off a nice theremin tone, maybe that's what they're going for. Ironside. No, no, it's not... I'm guessing you're all too young to remember Ironside. Yeah, that's those things. Very ceremony the French moments, weren't they? Oh, blimey. You have to be careful, because, like, out of nowhere, I'll just go mad. I've got a limiter on here, so hopefully it wouldn't go into digital distortion. But still, that was a bit... See that? Out of nowhere, that filter just resonates. How about bass sounds? Uh, I'm sorry for my sniffing. My asthma's uh, quite weirdly bad tonight. I mean, coughing and sniffing loads and been on my inhaler. Um, oh, well, that's nice. Well, that's very nice. Yeah, I'd probably have it more like. Mmm, 
that's not bad. I like that. 80s res bass, apparently. <laughs> They have to do that. So that could be the nice lead. This is currently on sale for £15 in UK money, so um, I'm guessing, well, I don't know the rate of conversion in a minute, uh, who knows with all the news today, I'm guessing that's like $17 or $18, have I got that wrong way around? And see the synth itself, um, don't need the reverb. I'll take the resonance down a bit here so it's less squelchy. And take down the ADSR. Um, but I like the fact that you start off with the three oscillators. Um, I find it weirdly limiting when I open up soft synths and they've just got like two oscillators. I'm like, really? Like you could have you could have fifteen hundred. Why have you just got two? Because for me, you know, unless it's a virtual module and you can bung in as much as you want, I want to have the capability of mixing at least three different things. This is why I always go to Anna too, because you start off and it's got six oscillators or six sound sources. I mean, they're not all oscillators. So you could just go mad with it. I, so, I, you know, I open up two and I'm kind of like, oh. Um. That's why... Um, You'll see uh, behind me, uh, I think you can, well, you can see the bottom of it, I think. Yeah, I can think you see most of it. Um, you can see the key bed of it. it is my first ever polysynth, which is uh, Roland JX3P, which I got in 1983. It was so new, the MIDI was still new then. Um, and I loved it because it had two DCOs. So all the Junos that were around then had had one DCO off the the earlier synths around then they had actual VCOs. Um, and just having two meant you could do cross modulation, you could get crazy metal sounds, you could do w weird bell tones. Uh, oh, let me load in um, uh, a basic thing here. Oh, see, it's just, I want to just clear the thing and have. Let's do super new is quite. That's quite full of set. I wish it was a bit more boring to start off with. Um, so here, like I'll show you, there's nothing playing through now. So now the only thing I'll let through is the ring mod. Now the ring mod is over here, but this is already kind of normal to go to there. So we don't have to put the cable in. That's the output going to that input. The two inputs which are already collect connected are VCO1 and VCO2. So they're both going in, and then the ring modulation circuit is doing this. So if I... And it's the sine waves are both going in. So if I do this... You get some nice ring modulation tones. Now doing that's okay, but if I sweep the frequency with something else, like say a um, a sample and hold, which is already wired in here, so it's there waiting. Oh, 
Or if I just play the keyboard and turn off this keyboard control, so it's just play the same tone. And instead of sending in the sine waves, let's send in source. Let me. So if I turn keyboard control back on for this oscillator. And I'm, I'm not even doing any filter or anything. This is just a plain. Let's try sweeping the frequency. Uh, let's use this for that. See, like, let's look at some of this. Um, sound effects, that's quite a good one. They've done some nice ones here. I'll switch it standing in because it's bound to be loud. Isn't that there's such a sense of space in there? Seriously, I mean, even if you don't consider yourself a synth head, if you've got a garage band or something laying about, I don't know if you have, or, I mean, I don't know what's, are they like, I'm sure there must be free equivalents on PCs too. Um, you could have loads of fun with it, it's just, just mucking around with the presets. Before I get lost in the world of sound, uh, let's put that one to bed for now. Maybe be seeing it a bit. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to look at, which was um, Cherry's ARP 2600 soft synth, um, which I really like, and it's very stupid. <laughs> 